Hey everyone, welcome to my studio. For the next several months, I will be working on the landscape of Dunwoody Mosaic, which will go in this niche in the city of Dunwoody, Georgia. I'm partnering with mosaic artist Jennifer Freeman, and our design was approved by the city. It is called the Landscape of Dunwoody, again, and it is very colorful and has landscape elements as well as the word Dunwoody hidden in it. So this mosaic will be made up of glass as well as ceramic pieces and we are working back and forth between my studio and Jennifer's studio. It is 161 square feet, 36 feet long, and this video is part four in the series. One of the tasks that I've been working on for this very large mosaic is to make some fused elements that will be going in the foliage on this very large mosaic. So each week my goal is to make five kiln loads full of pieces. And here is the first kiln load this week. Ah, oh, nice. All right. I have already made all of the fused inclusions for these bushes down here and for these trees right here. And now I am moving on to these trees. So I wanna go a little bit less intense. These were not near the letters. We're trying to make the letters darker and more intense in color. So these could be darker because they're not on top of the letter, but this is on top of the letter W. So I want to make these lighter. And then there are some bushes down here that will have some light parts and some more intense parts inside the letters. And then again, up here, these ones are gonna have some lighter colors. And then over here, they can be a little bit more intense. So we're not following this exactly. This was to, just to get an idea of how each area was gonna be different. And I was never considering the type of glass that I could acquire. So now that I have some glass, we're, we have a little bit more variety in those trees than what's shown in this picture. But I do want to have some less intense colors on this W. So I have it set up underneath my table uh, because my table is already full of stuff. So it's underneath my table, it's upside down, and I have this swath here, and then on the floor over here, I have that swath. So I need to make more of that kind, which has celadon, which is sort of a grayish green as the base. And then over here, I have got a, sort of a seafoam green as a base, and then I put a muted greenish gray and white on top. So the little overlap piece that's in between can be a little more intense, I think. Uh, but these ones that are down closer to the letter, we want to be a little bit less intense. So here we go. I can tell just from laying them out, I'll need at least one more load just to fill in that space. So I think I'll work on that today. Okay, so we are in a real push to finish panels one and two because we need to know how heavy they are, which is really important when we go to install. These are the smallest panels of the 12, and when we get down the line, if they're too heavy, it's gonna be a struggle to install them. So we really want to maybe consider that now so that we'll know if we need to cut them before we put the mosaic on down the line.
All right, we just had a work session and we decided a couple things. We might go with just rounds in these loops. Maybe, we'll see. Um, these are just placeholders. We're trying to think of something else we can put in there. We'll see about that. But overall, it's really reading well. <laughs> It looks great and we're getting things glued down so i have to make get some more pieces from home this one i said we might switch or i can't find that glass so we'll see about that one that's it i know i haven't mentioned this these are totally luxurious just to touch i can't stop touching them they feel so cool this mosaic is actually going to be located right next to the wall is right next to a sidewalk so people are yes. going to be right yes. up on it some people the pedestrians will be right up on it and other people will be driving by really quickly so i'm just saying this feels amazing feel this jennifer it's so great so amazing yeah it's so amazing Ooh. it does the cycle's complete, but it's 181 degrees, so it's still kind of warm. Let's take a look. Ooh, nice. I accidentally ripped some holes in my paper last time, so couldn't put glass there, but it's good. These are the fused pieces at the top of panel six, and I have done two kiln loads to fill this space, and you can see there are quite a few holes. So I think I'm gonna do more of this because I really like this color combination. We can use it in another place on the mosaic, but I want to also make sure that this really has enough to fill it. So if I do another, maybe at least a half a kiln load and some smaller pieces, then that'll be completely done. So that's what I'll do. And maybe I'll pick a new color combination for this. Today I am working in my studio on the letter D, which is going to be stained glass, and we are going to have a border of dark tiles around it. Now, the tiles have not been purchased, and I happen to already have these in my studio, so I just laid them out just to get an idea, but we haven't finalized the selection on the border tiles, but I'm going to go ahead and start laying in the glass on the letter, and then what I might do is face tape it, and adhere it down, or I might just move the pieces aside and adhere them one at a time. I'm not sure, but this panel's not going anywhere until that glass is glued down. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it cut and placed, but not gluing anything yet. Good. I have a different type of load to do for the kiln this time, and that is this special glass from Bullseye with gold in it, both in purple and in pink. In order to get the correct color, you have to fire it, and it will strike to the color that you want. So this is a rather bluish color, and when I put it in the kiln, it will turn purple. From the bullseye catalog, this is the purple color that we're hoping to achieve from firing I'm just it. going to do half a sheet of the purple. do half a sheet of the pink to fill the kiln, and then it's going to be a pretty simple load. Now, this one, I do have a sample. This is the color that it turns, and this is the color that we really want. But Jennifer liked some of this lighter pink, so I'm going to keep this one because it has some variation in it that's very interesting. And I am going to clean this piece and load half a sheet of this on the other part of the kiln. And we'll, we'll see how it changes color tomorrow when it comes out. That was super fast. That took me about two minutes to, to get the shelf ready. 
way faster than making those inclusions. So I'm going to go loaded in so the I didn't channel. mention this. This is pink with gold and this is purple with gold. They are both sort of on the pricey end as far as stained glass goes because they're actually made with gold. So I'm just a little bit nervous that they won't come out, but I'm going to trust the process. I got a schedule from a couple different people and I researched online. So I know how I'm going to program my kiln for best results. Here's the schedule I ended up using. I'm doing the long fuse where I hold it for two hours at the beginning. I'm going up to 1430 instead of as high as bullseye says. And then coming down, I'm going to anneal it and stop for two hours and then finish up. So we'll see how Where are we at here? What have you been working on? Okay, first of all, I want to share that I had um, a flood in my studio <laughs> yeah. three days ago. So that's taken a minute to clean up, but nothing was damaged. And so what we're working on today is we've got these wonderful fused glass pieces in for our foliage of our trees. Julie today is going to be working on what we call a swath, which is right below the trees, which is sort of a transition between the trees and the rolling hills. I've been working on the sky, which I have to say is beautifully done. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> which is going all the way through here. And then we get to hills and trees down below, and we're filling in a lot of that today and actually gluing it. Yay! Yay! I've been using this little gizmo called a toothpaste squeezer with a key on it, and it's been great with my silicone. All right, so here's how far we got. A lot of these are placed, but they are not glued down. I did, however, start gluing this section up here. That's glued. And then I brought the glass over for these other parts because it wasn't over here. And I'll be filling that in next week, hopefully. It's looking amazing. We have a little bit of business down there that you kind of have to look past in the glass up there, but it's coming along. Woo. I've got my original glass so we can compare. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Color change in magic. Awesome. I've been testing out areas with some of these fused inclusions, and I've got some green ones. I have some yellow ones that are going to be further down the line for the rays. But I, I do have some blue glass, so I'm going to make a few blue ones for the sky area.
awesome. That's good. That's putting it together. Thanks for watching. See you next time.